Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're going to be taking a look at the Kaiser Lieb. Now, before I go any further in this video, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you like what you see, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along with me, and I will do my absolute best to keep pumping out some good content for you guys to check out. Now, this knife here, this one was uh, lent to the channel by my brother. He picked this guy up. He really liked it. He's put it through some use, told me what he thought about it. So I thought I'd do a little disassembly and cleaning of it, which I've already done, and carried it for a couple days. And I gotta say, this was a pleasant little surprise. It wasn't one that really uh, popped out to my eyes at first on uh, the websites as I was doing a little knife shopping. So I'm really glad he picked this up. So thank you, Quint. I appreciate that. And um, let's go over the rundown on this knife. We have an overall length of 5.75 inches, blade length coming in at 2.375 inches, cutting edge as well at 2.375 inches, blade width of 1 inch, blade thickness at 0 0.10. We have a blade material of Bowler N690, which I think is a great steel. I'm always happy to see that on a, uh, a budget-based product. Just an excellent choice for a budget knife. Blade style being a Warncliffe is what they have it listed, but I very hardly beg to differ. I'm going to call this a sheep's foot. I think this is absolutely a sheep's foot. So we're going to go with sheep's foot. And we have a satin flat grind with a handle length of 3.5 inches, handle width coming in at 0.875 inches, handle thickness right there at 0.43 inches, Material being a really nice brown micarta that is nicer than it looks on uh, the websites. If you're ever checking this knife out, for some reason, I, I, th I thought the material looked a little goofy. But getting it in hand, um, it darkens up really well. And it has some good grip, which we'll go over later too. So very nice brown micarta. We have a right hand only tip-up carry. Weight coming in at 2.71 ounces. And a total price of, wait for it. Pretty good, $55, $55 for this knife, which is really not that bad. Um, before we get in to directly just this knife, let's do some size comparisons here. As you can see, this is not a very big knife, so we will compare it to some other not very big knives. We have the Wee Banter, which is somewhat close, a little longer handle, and the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio. As you can see there, there is a uh, pretty big size disparity between both of those two. And, and those two are not uh, big knives. So this knife is a lot smaller than uh, than one would think, even when you read the specs. I, I'm starting to realize that I'm just really bad at getting an idea of how big a knife is by reading specs. Because uh, I've been surprised by a lot lately. Not necessarily in a bad way. I'm just like, oh, okay, this is, this is a smaller knife, a much smaller knife than I thought. So there's those, and we got a couple more here. Let's do the quiet, I am the worst, quiet carry waypoint here. This is a fantastic knife, definitely a lot longer than this one, but I think it's another good one where a decent amount of people have had it in hand, along with the Civivi Elementum. So again, to give you guys an idea, not a super huge knife, but... A pretty powerful little blade that we will go over more here in a second, too. Very powerful blade, as a matter of fact. One more comparison for you. The Benchmade Large Griptilian, as well as the Benchmade Bug Out. It's a little early in the morning. My thumbs are not quite uh, flipping on all cylinders, so excuse these whiff flips. It's kind of terrible right now. But there you go. There's some size comparisons to give you guys an idea of the size of this knife. And now let's dive right into this blade. Um, first start off by saying this blade is perfectly centered. Very nice centering. Looks great. And there is absolutely no blade play anyway whatsoever. I had a viewer comment on one of my videos and he's like, you know, Wayne, that was a really good video, but could you mention from now on if there's any blade play? That's one of the most important things to me. 
And I thought for a brief second, and I thought, you know what? Blade play is probably one of the most important things to me too. So have absolutely no idea why I haven't been specifying that on every knife. I think it's because a lot of the knives I'm going to be reviewing aren't going to have blade play. Um, that would be a pretty rare occurrence. But again, it is a huge thing. So I have absolutely no idea why I haven't been mentioning that. And I am going to make a note to mention that in every video moving forward. So thank you to that viewer for pointing that out to me. Just to let you guys know, I read and try to respond to absolutely every comment. I really appreciate your support. And the last thing I would ever do to uh, show my appreciation, appreciation is ignore you. So um, I will always do my best to respond to every reply. And uh, like I said, I'm doing this to, to help interact with the knife community because I think it's a great community with a lot of uh, fun going people. So I am seeing those comments and I appreciate the comments. But anyway, so back to the blade there. I, I thought this blade looked really weird at first. It, it didn't, uh, it was just, like I said, I do definitely consider it a sheep's foot, not a Warren Cliff by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it, it kind of came up, it doesn't have a whole lot of belly, but there is a little belly there and the, the tip kind of drops down and it was just a little odd shape to me at first and the flipper tab really stuck out. I didn't like, so when the knife's closed, it, it really looks fine. It's, yeah, it's got a little bigger flipper tab, but it looks good. Um, but then you flip it out in that, uh, that flipper tab is kind of like, the big schnoz that everyone sees. It's like, God, that flipper tab's so big. But it also does a really good job as doubling as a finger guard. And, and it does do a really good job of that. The gears, uh, it's going to be very hard to ever slip on this thing and cut yourself. Pretty much not going to happen. So it does serve a pretty valuable purpose. And the blade shape really, it, it grew on me. It's not uh, anymore. It's just another blade. I, mean, I don't think it's the most beautiful blade in the world, but it is an absolute slicing machine coming in at 11 thousandths behind the edge. That's something I've kind of gotten away from, and I should probably get back to it, is measuring the um, blade edge thickness with calipers. And this thing is an absolute razor, 0 0.10 ounces, ounces at the top of the spine, all the way down to 11 thousandths at the edge makes it to be a pretty epic slicer and it had a good edge on this um kaiser's never been bad about edges but they've never been like cold steely to where you're like oh yeah watch out it's going to it could slice a finger off but this one's good this one's really good and it is just an absolute razor so very well done on that one kaiser and you see a full flat grind, which just adds to the great sliciness of this knife. I'm so glad they didn't bring it up and, like, you know, stop it right here. Wouldn't have made a huge difference, but if you're going to have 11 thousandths behind the edge, it, it, you cannot go wrong with a full flat grind here. The only thing that I'm really missing on this blade, and really on the rest of the knife, so the micarta, it adds a good amount of grip, but it's a little slippery on the sides because... It's it's chamfered really well. There's no sharp spots or anything, but there's no jimping down here, which I don't really have a huge problem with because you got the finger guard to kind of stop your finger, but I really wish there was jimping up here. I think they were trying to keep this as more of like an urban EDC carry to where you're not going to be doing anything super hard with it, but I still, I still wish there was some jimping right here. It just would have been perfect. Maybe just a little on the two back liners here continuing up to the spine that would have been it would have been perfect because you can't choke up on this knife um one of the few knives that i you can't choke up on and i'm still okay with that because it still feels good in my hand it's basically a three finger knife in my hands but it still feels good um the designer of this being azo 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 i, I apologize if i pronounce your name incorrectly but did a very good job on this design it, it does feel really good in hand and you have a lot of blade to work with in a small package um that 2.375 inches really uh stands out so well job done there but um but no i just wish there was some jimping up here i think that would have been a, a great great little uh cherry on top of what you already got going which is turning out to be a really really enjoyable knife um, the handle and ergos on this guy, I want to start off by saying I love this micarta. I really do like this brown micarta. I didn't think it was going to be as nice as I as it is. And it actually, it doesn't always look this dark too. Uh, 
my hands are a little sweaty this morning. It's kind of humid around here, so the oils are kind of soaking into it real quick. But it, it dries up nice to where when you're not ha holding it in hand the whole time, it doesn't always look like this. It dries up, kind of looks a little more like maybe that hole or that hole to where there's some darkness and some dryness, which is, I don't know, it's kind of uh, weirdly nice, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But it's also smooth but still grippy. It's not polished. It's not a polished micarta, but it is smooth. But I tell you what, you get a plenty good enough grip on that. Like I said, you can't choke up. I don't know why I was doing that. I guess I'm trying to cut myself again. Um, but it does feel really good in hand. It feels very good in hand. Um, the smaller your hand is, the more you'd probably like it. Even with the bigger hand, like I've said, though, I, I do enjoy this. I, I have no problem carrying this. It, it could be a nice little EDC knife. Um, the pocket clip is very nice. No hot spot whatsoever. Um that's one of the benefits to a clip being not deep carry is it's usually a little flatter. It doesn't have the, the loop coming back down, so you don't feel that, especially since it's uh, a little closer up in your hands. It's not uh, filling out your full palm. It's really important that the butt of that doesn't stick out too much, and it doesn't. It feels nice and flat. Um, just a nice little grip. Um, what I'm about to say here is probably my OCD speaking, but I thought I'd let my OCD stand up and say something. Um, I don't, these circles, first of all, let me say, I don't mind the circles as much as I thought I would, but this is my thing. So here you have the pivot collar, which is a nice circle, pretty much a little bigger than this. So my brain is telling me why, why in the heck didn't they just move this circle out a little, perfectly center it and move it closer to this and then move this one up and over just a little. And the same with all these to where instead of having the pivot circle, and then one straight line going down here, you could have kind of a flow of circles starting from the pivot circle down, down, down here. And they could have spaced them perfectly. It would have looked a lot more pleasing. It would have flown a lot better on the handle. And again, that is definitely my OCD speaking, but I think it would have looked so much better. Personally, I wish they just wouldn't have done the circles at all, but... I, t I don't know if they would have done that little that little attention to detail and kind of lined them up in a very mild kind of rounded line from here down to here. I think that would have looked really good, and I might have even preferred it. But the way they have it here, it's it's not bad. It's just kind of like it's like having a lot of things lined up really nice and then just taking one and just pushing it out of the way. So, I, like I said, I. I I don't love it. I don't hate it. Um, I just wish they would have paid a little more attention to that detail. But that's really all I got to say about that. The handle and ergos um, are good. They're definitely good. The materials are good. I just wish they would have moved those over. That would have been so much better. But that's okay. Um, jimping would have been nice on the front right up here too. Because there's absolutely no jimping on the flipper tab. But at the same time... Um, the action on this guy, which we will touch on very soon, is it, it doesn't need it. It definitely doesn't need jimping, but it would have never really hurt. And then you'd also have that jimping to act as kind of an extra thing to bite your finger down here since there's no jimping on here. The no jimping here actually feels good, but it would have been nice to have that to just a just the last little bit of, of help to keep your finger from sliding because you can definitely – the whole outside of this handle is a, is, is a little slippery. But like I said, the – my Carta, in my opinion, is plenty grippy enough to where you have a, a, a solid purchase. I won't say rock solid, but definitely a solid purchase. So no worries about it slipping out of your hand. But I'm, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of always thinking of what could be done to prevent slippage. Now the action. Straight to the action on this guy. It is fantastic. In my opinion, definitely the best part about this knife. This is another one. It really, I should have pulled it out. I don't know why I didn't. Um, the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog, as far as action, this is very similar to the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog. If you like the action of that knife and you like the way this knife looks, then you're going to enjoy this knife a lot because it really is a snappy. I try and reserve the word snappy for Protex because you just press a button and they do snap out there with authority. But I tell you what, you push this in and it flies out. It really does fly out. You would think it's almost automatic. Um, an automatic deployment, I mean, but no, it is an absolute snappy little beast. It's a light blade. Just, you can, you can flip, flip it down, kind of like light switch it or pull it down 
and it comes out really good and plenty fast enough. And that still is very satisfying and feels good. But if you push it in, kind of like some hinders, some hinders you have to push in, but just push kind of down in an inward motion and rockets out. That's definitely my uh, preferred way of deployment on this flipper. But again, that's that's also where a little jimping would have come in handy because if you push, it's easy to kind of slip off it. But it's it's easy, but I don't because I, I you know it's again it's one of those things. I'm gonna start saying this a lot, but once you know it, you know it. You know it's like riding a bike. You're gonna fall a couple times when you first start riding a bike, but once you figure it out, you got it down. And you know as long as you're sober, you probably won't fall off that bike. <laughs> but uh, but no, very nice action. Very pleasing action. So this knife's been a real surprise to me. Um, they, you know, I really like this. There's actually a new model coming out. Not a new model of this, but it's it has revised handles coming out in the fall. It's going to have the blue pivot collar, but it's going to have kind of like a natural tan micarta. And there's not going to be any circles. And the way they... Um, the way they cut the micarta, it almost kind of looks like wood grain. It looks really, really nice. I'm going to be buying that one. Um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned the price. Yeah, yeah, $55 for this knife. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers that this newer release in the fall is going to be $55 as well. And I'm like 99% sure I'm going to buy it because I really do like this knife. Um, I like it a lot more than I thought I would, and for 55 bucks, and if it has the, it's going to have the micarta, but yeah, 55 bucks with that tan micarta without these holes, and the blue and tan go great together. It's a, it's a really nice little uh, color pairing that you don't see on a lot of knives, and uh, like I said, there's I, I haven't really seen any real releases of this knife, or the of the new edition, but a guy on Instagram, it's like Azamite. I'm going to post a picture of this to my Instagram um, when I'm done with this video. Look it up. I, I'm at Wayne Sharp World, straight straight at Wayne Sharp World on Instagram. I'll post a picture of it and try and help link you guys to it better. Um, I, there's not really a straight-up link I can post, I don't think, about what the new scales look like. But they look great. I think the newer one that's going to be released looks a lot better than this one. And, and I don't really have any big reservations against this one um if you like this one absolutely pull the trigger for 55 bucks it's an absolutely fantastic knife with a razor sharp edge fantastic action and very good ergos for a little knife so that's all i got for this one um let me know what you guys think what do you think of that blade shape what do you think of that flipper tab and what do you think of kaiser overall in general because kaiser is having a very strong year this year They've gotten my attention more this year than they have in any single year of releases. So really cool stuff coming out. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye.